Hello, Security Token Market. I am joined here with Ed Nwakadi of Red Swan CRE. Ed, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Kyle. Pleasure to be here. So, we all know about Red Swan. You've made some serious headlines over the past 12 months, but for maybe anybody that, that hasn't heard about what you guys are working on in the commercial real estate space, can you just give us a brief uh, intro? Absolutely. Well, Red Swan is a commercial real estate marketplace where we digitize commercial real estate assets. And by digitizing and putting on the blockchain, we're making investments in real estate much more affordable for the average accredited investor. Fascinating. So a question I've, I've been enjoying asking individuals that are here and, and are established in, in their respective industry is, what was that light bulb moment for you that when you realized the tokenization was really going to improve oh, your industry? That, that's a great question. I'll never forget that day. <laughs> I, I was actually uh, asked by one of my previous officers, another startup company, to go to a blockchain conference in Dallas, Texas. And I said, hey, I have to get no time for blockchain. What, by the way, what is blockchain, right? Right. And so he, he really insisted that I go, so I actually went there, and I was amazed by how the blockchain technology has gone up, and also how many people in the audience were heavily involved in cryptocurrency. And when I realized how the technology can be actually correlated to the real estate and financial markets, that's when the light bulb went off, right? And I said, hmm. Uh, but then what really got me to just dive right in is when the SEC, I think it's in late 2018, um, banned the ICOs, but then uh, authorized you know, the legality of STOs. Right. And so that was, that was it for me. I said, this is going to be the future of real estate. Well, sure. and, and especially, I mean, real estate is such a textbook industry of illiquid assets, not having any platform to really be able to to get access to investor capital or any kind of collateral really in an efficient manner. So it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, you're right. Real estate has been become investment for the elite right. and for the big institutions. And even as a practice, I was uh, the executive director at Cushman Wakefield okay. for 17 years. So I dealt with a lot of institutional investors and high net worth investors. And I can see that over the time period, my call log was basically 10 to 25 companies when I want to get something so quickly. I just call the institutions, they bid on it, and it gets done. But what it was really disappointing to me was that all those private investors who call on me asking for deals and ask for business, really they couldn't compete because they didn't have the capital to move right. quick enough. So that told me that it was an unfair market and we need to do something to make it more inclusive. So with Red Swan CRE, you're building a marketplace here. Obviously marketplaces can be difficult because you need to source investors and you need to source the, the asset owners. Which one was easier to sell on tokenization? Well, of course, uh, the asset owners were much easier because basically I just called my old customers and let them know what we're doing. And they look at me and say, what? What's, what's blockchain? What's tokenization? <laughs> but they just trusted my capability and decided to go with me. And so we've been able to you know, put $2.6 billion worth of real estate on the blockchain. Uh, and now our focus is continuing that process to add more sponsors onto our platform, uh, but also to start reaching out to accredited investors and educating them on the benefits of tokenization. Absolutely. So then let's, let's start then with the asset owners. What assets have you been able to convert, spread the gospel to? What, you know, what are you looking at right now that have, that have, brought, have been able to bring to the platform? Uh, we've had a, properties pretty much in many geographic areas around the United States. We have projects in Brooklyn, New York, and projects in Oakland, California. Uh, in Oakland, we have specifically a 26-story high-rise called the Lake House, Oakland, which is built on Lake Mare, which is a beautiful part okay. of Oakland. Um, and we also have projects in San Diego, we have projects in Austin, uh, we have projects in Dallas. So we're really starting to spread our, our projects in major metropolitan cities across the country. Um, but my focus right now is really going after some of the top tier developers okay. who are uh, kind of normally merchant builders where they build, stabilize, and sell. And we're trying to convince them that build, stabilize, and sell is kind of an old model and now build, stabilize, and hold, and manage in perpetuity uh, is a, probably a better financial model for them. So that's what we're going after, are more of the larger uh, property owners that have you know, a portfolio around the United States who are looking to liquidate their assets. We're trying to convince them not to liquidate and exit 100%, but liquidate at least 90% of their equity, right. and then stay on and become GP partners to manage that property for the new investors 
forever. Interesting. That's a fascinating model. It makes a lot of sense. And for, for the investor, how are these things structured? Is it kind of just a, a, an equity deal, or are they getting a, a rate of return each? Is it paid monthly, or how, what's, the, what's that structure look like yeah, for the investor? Great question. You know, typically, uh, these are LP investors, so they have no decision-making authority. Right. Uh, they, they, they rely on the GP yeah, partners. Most don't want it anyway. Most of them don't want it, but we think for the digital investor, guys who have cryptocurrency, want to move their mm -hmm. cryptocurrency into some stable asset, uh, they're looking at yield, right? They really care about you know the cash on cash yield every year. So most of the um, structures we put together is providing a preferred you know yield, preferred equity structure so that they get the first you know amount of profit from the prop project annually before the, any other investors or, in, or before the GP principals. What are you seeing are competitive rates for, for those yields? Obviously, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but no, what, no, what's kind of that looking like from an investor's perspective? It's low <laughs> compared to what you're, you're, you're probably used to over the years, <laughs> but that's not atypical from what's happening in the market today, right? right. Uh, investments are becoming more and more expensive and yield is compressing significantly. Right. So, but we try, like we have two funds, one is a value add fund and one is a core fund, and the yield from those is four and a half percent and five and a half percent. But typically on our projects, you would see yield from, you know, four and a half to six and a half percent on the early onset. And then you're looking at, you know, more of a, um, a uh, hurdle rate that's closer to 11 or 12 percent. Okay. So it's moderate, yeah. but uh, for the high quality assets that we're putting to the table, we think it's safe, uh, less risk, and also a very decent return in today's market. And what, what type of investor are you targeting, right? Accredited for sure, but is it specifically U.S. focused? Is it, is it international? You know, what, where, what's, what's the way you've been strategizing that outreach? We've been going after the uh, accredited investor in the United States okay. um, that um, you know, meets the accredited standards, but also international investors because my claim to fame uh, at Cushman and Wakefield was really bringing a lot of international investors who wanted to buy U.S. real estate. And I would be able to present these assets to them by flying over to China or Hong Kong and show them a portfolio of assets and then bring them over and position their, their offers on those properties before okay. they hit the market. So we like a lot of international investors to come into the United States. Uh, and I think that's a big part of our target market. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. And, and so then there's maybe a, a third piece to this, which is part of the asset owner perspective. But I know with, with, with what we've seen in Miami, which is a, you know, a hub for real estate, and there's plenty of brokers that are much smaller than I'm sure that some of the ones you're working with, is there any plans to offer some kind of white label opportunity or some type of opportunity for asset owners of other properties to be able to come and work with Red Swan? Absolutely. We, we love to property owners who come work with them to put their properties on our platform. We're here to help them raise capital. And you know, many companies can go and tokenize their own asset, and they can establish their own um, you know, platform for showcasing their assets. But we think the selling of that equity is a tough part. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's really the heavy lift. And they usually want to you know, hire a professional to help them with that heavy lift. Right. Because it's not easy to bring on board both institutional investors, accredited investors, um, because a lot of questions have to be answered, and you have to understand the real estate to answer those questions. That's and then awesome. also, your sponsors don't have time for that. For a sponsor to sit on the phone and talk to <laughs> 400 investors every month asking questions right. is just a total waste of their time. So hiring somebody like us, it helps them to be able to do what they do best and allow us to to do what we do best. Fascinating. So, so what does your timeline look like now? You've created these two funds. Are you currently raising capital for those funds, or are you expecting to launch a new product, or what's the, what's the timeline status? Yes. Like? You know, we're doing a lot of different things, um, but our overall goal is to continue to create infrastructure uh, to allow consumers, investors, to successfully buy and sell uh, digital real estate. Uh, with that, we, today we just launched a, a promotion with Dogecoin. So we're allowing uh, Dogecoin holders to be able to take their Dogecoin and convert it into equity into wow. some multifamily development projects, both in uh, Northern California as well as uh, in Seattle, Washington region. So, wow. so we think that that's kind of where the market is moving. Cryptocurrency owners want to diversify and they're looking at you know, more stable type of assets. Of course, they probably can put a higher percentage of their crypto in their portfolio, but just to be conservative, they want to put something that's going to be stable mm -hmm. and also give them some dividends mm -hmm. as well as growth potential, maybe not as fast as uh, Bitcoin, 
but it's consistent, right? right. So, right. yeah, I think that's kind of the way they're looking at and it. And you're already accepting payment, I would imagine, with, with maybe Bitcoin or, or some of the others, or is this an, a Dogecoin exclusive transaction? Right, right now, this is exclusive for Dogecoin. Okay. Um, we do accept, um, of course, USDC okay. or USDT, Great. Um, which is really pegged at, at the dollar. But uh, we're doing Dogecoin because we think that there is a specific value there. It's a $34 billion market cap uh, currency, and they, they're looking for ways that they can make better utility with that, right. that currency. Right, diversify a little and bit. And we hope that that works well. We can now open it up to other cryptocurrencies that are looking to do the same thing. And what are your thoughts on blockchains? You're, are you you're leveraging a, a blockchain solution right now, or are you kind of stand, trying to stay agnostic? What's your, what's your plan from that point? Uh, we're agnostic to blockchain um, protocol because basically it all leads to the same point, which is a digital asset that needs to be distributed mm -hmm. to sit in somebody's wallet. Right. But we are right now tokenizing everything using Ethereum, okay. uh, ERC-1400 you know, protocol. Okay. Uh, which is, I think, the highest protocol for security tokens, as you guys would know. <laughs> but um, we're, if we're open to all the types of blockchain as well. I mean, bottom line is to help the, the property owner to be able to distribute their shares to raise capital. Great. Well, you heard it here. If you're an investor, you're an asset owner, you're a real estate property manager, you got to reach out to Ed and his team at, at, at Red Swan Capital, or CRE. Um, what, what's the best way they can reach out to you and, and get to know uh, more? Well, they can visit us on our website at www.redswan.io. Also, uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Okay. I have a LinkedIn profile. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're all over the internet. Or so. always reach out to us, and we'd be happy to make the intro as well. Absolutely. All right, Ed, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. I really appreciate this. We'll talk to you next time. All right.